So today's presentation, we're going to be looking at uh, Autodesk CFD a little bit in more detail. Um, there's a lot to CFD to do. Uh, what we're going to be focusing on today specifically is fluid flow and how to optimize your designs with some of the tools that CFD has. So hopefully you can find this useful and uh, feel free to ask questions in the, uh, the window like Lori mentioned. Um, so what we're going to be looking at, uh, first we're going to be just going through some of the benefits um, that CFD has for your design process when you're optimizing your products. Um, some of the parameters that are built into CFD that you can change and what some of the functionalities are. And overall, you know, this presentation that I'm going to give here is, is focused on really what some of the benefits are of CFD and how you might be able to leverage it. Um, I will be doing a demo um, showing you some of the capabilities of CFD live. So I'll show you a little bit about the actual simplification process that happens before you actually open up a model in CFD. Um, sometimes to create materials, devices, resistances, things like that, you need to do some prep work on the front end. So I'll show you that work using Fusion 360 and then jump into uh, the actual CFD product demo. So if you have questions, hold on to them uh, or ask them in the window and then we will get to those at the end. So what are some things that we might use CFD for? Um, if we have a complex product that we need to optimize or maybe we want to evaluate performance to see if there are any issues with it that might be causing um, problems in the field uh, or maybe we feel like we might be able to improve uh, the manufacturability of something, uh, CFD is great for that. So some of the things to think about valves. So we've got valves. Uh, these can be stationary or with CFD, you can actually simulate motion. If you have the CFD ultimate product, you can simulate the motion of a check valve. If you wanted to show it in the open and closed position, moving back and forth, uh, you can do that with CFD, which is really neat. Uh, looking at nozzles, is gonna be where you've got like a compressible nozzle and you wanna figure out uh, what your um, pressure and volume flow rate are uh, on the nozzle. Maybe some of the forces that are created by the fluid on the sidewalls, you can calculate those forces as well. Uh, pumps. So looking at, uh, at pumps and circulation, making sure you don't have any uh, stagnant zones or cavitation occurring in your pump, um, just making sure that it's performing as expected, then you're getting the right mass flow rate and volume flow rate out of that. You can also look at the combination of um, devices like pumps and blowers um, simulated in that pump. And then heat exchangers are a great application as well. So anytime you're looking at fluid flow as well as heat transfer, Maybe you need to calculate temperatures of air, water. Um, maybe you have like a, a high wattage device, like an LED that you want to verify. You can do that with CFD as well. So looking at flow, uh, you know, some of the things, some of the factors that we're looking at, some of the results that we're using to guide our decision. Typically, you're looking at things like exit velocity. Uh, determining what the velocity is on average, but also you can determine what the velocity is at specific sample points so that you can compare that with test data that you might have and determine um, how accurate your solution is. Um, looking at pressure loss across the system, pressure drops, always a really good indicator of how something's performing. You can verify that with CFD. Um, flow path efficiency, so how efficient is your flow path? How much time is it spending in the system? Uh, you can run a transient study to determine things like that. Um, also, in general, just is your flow uh, maintaining a, an orientation you want? Are you getting any uh, recirculation that's causing trouble? And then uh, consistent heat exchange. So are you getting the heat transfer that you need? Is it consistent and reliable uh, in your product? So these are some great, great options that we can uh, evaluate with Autodesk CFD. So, you know, what are some, some impacts of this? Um, you know, maybe you have uh, some flow rate being reduced and you want to determine if the flow rate's reduced, what could happen? Well, you know, you might see something like a, a pressure loss, some stagnant areas and recirculation might start to occur that can lead to cavitation. And when you start seeing recirculation, uh, stagnant areas in your design, that can create increased erosion. Right, you might have uh, maybe you have a pump that's moving, um, you know, uh, dirt. Maybe it's moving uh, something with sand and particles in it, where you know erosion might start to occur if you have some stagnant areas and you have a lot of sitting water, sitting uh, particles in your design. That can cause problems 
And then it can also create an inconsistent temperature distribution. So you might be seeing um, temperatures vary across the outlet where you need it to be consistent. Maybe you're cooling a device and you're getting inconsistent cooling on that because you have um, some recirculation occurring um, of the heated air you're trying to remove from the system. Um, all those things come into play and they can have a pretty big impact um, downstream. Some of the parameters um, that we might be using in these designs, um, specifically things like pressure. So we can look at the pressure in our system and determine where we have a pressure drop and maybe where we have stagnation pressure. Um, we can look at um, fluid flow through the system, looking at flow rate. So what is our volume flow rate? What is our mass flow rate? Those are great indicators of how our product is performing. Turbulence, so turbulence and overall velocities of our sample points. We can determine the velocity of our fluid at any point in the system, which can be really useful data uh, when we're first looking at a new design. And overall flow distribution is really helpful. So you can look at, uh, at an outlet of your design. Is the flow consistent? So are you getting the same velocity um, all the way across the outlet? Or are you seeing like an increase or a decrease um, in certain regions um, due to the geometry or maybe a resistance that you have placed in the system? Then looking at heat transfer, we can determine our temperature distribution. So where we have hot points, where we have cold points. Um, how consistent that is over the course of a study. Um, and we might even have something where we have multi-fluids heat exchangers. Maybe you're looking at like, like a refrigerant, refrigerant being used in a system to cool uh, using coils or, um, or pipes, and things like that. You can use multi-fluid cooling as well. So some of the challenges we run into, so flow efficiency, how efficient is it, how consistent is our flow um, going through the system with our volume flow rate and our velocity, um, how balanced it is. Uh, what are our temperatures? Do we have any temperatures that are gonna cause design failure? Maybe we are going beyond uh, the limit of the material with our heat, uh, or maybe getting too cold either way. Uh, we can evaluate the temperatures and make sure that they line up with the material data that we have, and we're not gonna have any failures due to um, too much heat or too little heat. The efficiency of pumps, are we getting the volume flow rate and the pressure that we need from our pump for it to actually work the way it needs to? Um, this is something we can evaluate really quickly with CFD, whereas if you were to do it manually with physical testing, it's going to take a lot of time to get all of that sample data together, especially when you're looking at a new design or maybe you're modifying an existing one. The fastest way to determine that change is going to be with um, something like Autodesk CFD, where you can do it using um, finite element analysis. So particles and contaminants, do we have any erosion anywhere we have uh, particles sitting in our system? And is that gonna cause cavitation or failure? Um, these are all ways that we can uh, evaluate the product and these are some challenges that we come across. So looking at this pump, uh, you know, we'll be able to observe with CFD things like velocity. So what the velocity is at every point in the system where we might have turbulence and recirculation internally on areas where we have compressible flow. And then ultimately, uh, we can sample our data using points as well as planes to determine individual uh, nodal results, but also we can calculate the average flow rate across an inlet or an outlet, which can be really useful when comparing designs side by side. So that would be velocity results. If we're looking at a system and observing the pressure results, we can determine pressure drop using sample points and creating an XY plot showing how the pressure changes from point A to point B. Uh, we can also determine where we might have cavitation pressures um, and where we might have lower high pressures in the system really quickly. So using results like this, where we can see a plane showing the pressure in the entire system all at the same time, makes it really easy for us to um, pinpoint problem areas, as well as get really useful sample data that we can use to improve the product further. So like I showed on the previous slide, you can observe things like velocity and volume flow rate with CFD. You can also observe pressure. You can even combine that with thermal. So maybe you want to determine uh, where you have um, thermal effects on the casing. So in this case, the actual 
um, maybe it's steel being used to design this pump. You can determine what the thermal loading on that's going to be, and you can use that in a separate finite element analysis to determine what the thermal stresses are going to be on your system because you know the temperature distribution profile. You can also look at how um, your fluid and your solid interact with one another, as well as how two separate fluids might interact with one another in a system uh, if you're doing any cooling. Um, so we can evaluate how well the system is cooling, how well it's heating, uh, and where the most heat transfer is occurring in our system, and if it's going to be problematic for any of those materials or any of those fluids um, as they go through the system. So once we have our results about the SCFD, so we're going to go through a demo today, um, I'll show you some ways we can extract information from those results. Once we have that information, we have things that we need to decide. So what changes need to be made? Uh, do we need to use a different um, inlet volume flow rate or a different velocity to achieve the outlet velocity and pressure that we need? Do we need to change the geometry to increase or decrease flow? Maybe we need to reduce the amount of stagnation that's occurring by updating the geometry. Um, all those things can be quickly evaluated with CFD. Um, we can get really accurate data. This data can be difficult to get with physical testing sometimes, especially in more complex applications. So we can get data that would be otherwise difficult to come by. We get a lot more detail than we would have with physical testing because we can get thermal um, pressure and velocity all together in one system to really um, take a deep dive into the product and how it's working. And we can visualize, and that can be used to simulate um, fluid flow through a system that can be helpful for really understanding how something works. And you can also create really nice visual simulations and recordings that can be used for marketing material um, and product documentation as well. So there's some really nice uh, visualization tools that are built in to the CFD product as well. So where we're looking at in the design process uh, is going to be in that design and engineering phase. So typically when we get to using Auto CFD, out of CFD past the conceptualization stage. So we've already put together an initial design. It might even be a design that's already been used in the field for many years, and you're looking at um, redefining it or improving it. But either way, this design and engineering stage is critical. Um, if we do a good job of evaluating the design and improving it at this stage, it's gonna save us money before we get to actually physically testing it and prototyping it. Um, as anyone knows, prototypes can be really expensive, especially if they are in a small volume. Um, and so before you start spending money on testing, spending money on fixturing, on prototypes, all of those things add up. So if you can save yourself some money on the front end, this is typically done by determining a geometry that you think is going to be best using the data from CFD. You might still discover things in physical testing that you didn't in CFD. It's not like it's going to be a perfect um, you know, silver bullet for all of your design issues. What it's going to do is going to give you a really, really good starting point so that when you get to physical testing, you're already close to what the final design needs to be. You can make a few minor changes at that stage, and then you're ready for manufacturing. That's really where CFD falls into this process. So we already mentioned some of the benefits, you know, we're improving our product performance. Um, we're eliminating areas where we might have erosion, maybe cavitation occurring in our design that might cause problems or failure. Visualizing our flow uh, and also determining what some of these thermal effects and results are. So do we have enough thermal stress to cause failure? And in general, is the temperature profile what we would expect? So just so that you're aware, we're gonna be focusing on CFD today. Um, the Autodesk Suite has a lot of other products uh, that might be able to help you with simulation. Um, if you're doing anything structural, so if you do need to run a structural analysis, um, in addition to fluid flow, I'd recommend Inventor Nastran. Used to be called Autodesk Nastran NCAD, it's now been rebranded as Inventor Nastran. That comes in the product design and manufacturing collection if you have that. Uh, Nastran is great for running structural analysis. Um, if you need to do injection molding analysis, CFD cannot study injection molding in that rate. 
Um, for doing that type of analysis, you'll need Autodesk Mold Flow. So just keep that in mind if you are doing any injection molding. All right. So some of the uh, features that Autodesk CFD has, this is an outdated uh, image from 2016. Uh, the current CFD version is CFD 2021. So if you are looking at purchasing it, uh, 2021 is the most recent version that they have released. Um, looking at some of the functions you have, uh, you have a CAD-driven design study environment, and you can integrate directly with Fusion 360. So I'll show that today. You can actually do all of your design work and um, simplification with Fusion 360, and you can actually export it directly to CFD, and you can create a link so that if you make a change to the original Fusion 360 file, you can quickly update the CFD geometry without having to start over. Um, it has some nice mesh auto sizing features, so you can actually uh, use built-in intelligence to create a mesh that should be reliable. And you can also have the results um, adapt as they go and adjust the mesh in areas of interest. So you can actually generate a converged result really quickly because there's a lot of built-in intelligence to the solver. Uh, once you have solved, you can explore design options uh, really quickly. There's a decision center that I'll show you that allows you to compare multiple uh, designs or multiple scenarios side by side. So maybe you're changing the geometry or you're changing the conditions and you want to compare the effect on the system. You can do that really quickly with the design, uh, decision center that CFD has. Uh, cloud solving is a possibility with CFD, so you can actually purchase cloud credits and do all of the solving using the Autodesk servers. The advantage of that is you could run, let's say you have 10 different studies you need to run, you could run all 10 studies at the same time using the cloud. So instead of having to solve them one by one locally, the cloud could solve them in parallel and get you re your results really quickly. So when you're working with a really large analysis or several analyses at the same time, cloud solving is often the best route to take. It's also CAD system neutral. I'm going to be showing you the pre-processing and the demo using Fusion 360. Just keep in mind, if you're using Inventor, you can export Inventor files into CFD. If you're using SolidWorks, uh, Pro Engineer, Katia, uh, maybe you're using Creo, it doesn't really matter. Um, CFD can import really any CAD file that's out there. Um, if your platform isn't directly supported, you can export your file as a step file, and step files are also supported by CFD. If you're coming from Revit, so if any of you out there are using Revit, you can export as a SAT, so a .SAT file, and that can be imported into either Fusion 360 for pre-processing, or you can bring that directly into CFD uh, if it's in a state that's ready for analysis already. All right, so I think uh, from here, we'll just jump into our demo. So I will switch over into Fusion 360 to start. So this is the geometry we're going to look at today. I think this is a really good example because we can look at fluid flow, but also there's a couple of devices in here that we're going to simplify um, for use in Autodesk CFD. So this is a blower. Um, it's going to have a um, motor here driving an internal fan. So if I show you the fan here, you'll see that inside there's this fan that's going to be rotating um, at a given RPM. And you might even have you know, the actual um, flow rate of the fan and things like that. Um, whatever data you can get, you'll want to have that before you start your analysis. But this fan here is going to be pulling the air from the inlet right here and pull it up and then exit out the square outlet at the top. So, so look at this with CFD. I'm going to need to make some simplification. Typically, you're not going to bring in a design that is this detailed into Autodesk CFD. One thing to think about is if you're only doing fluid flow, so if I'm not doing any heat transfer, which in this case, I'm not going to be running heat transfer yet on this analysis, I just want to determine 
what the pressure drop in the system is and what the volume flow rates are at the inlet and the outlet. So because I'm not doing thermal, I only need the actual fluid volume. I don't need the sheet metal that's used on the exterior. I don't need the support frame. I definitely don't need this motor. So there's a lot of detail that would really create a complex mesh. You don't need any of that if you're doing fluid flow. If I was doing heat transfer, I might consider including some of these components so I can determine how much heat is being lost through the sheet metal and what the exterior temperature of that might be to determine if, it, if it's going to be safe to touch or not. But in this case, I'm just doing fluid flow. I just need the fluid volume. So when you're simplifying things with Fusion 360, what I recommend is switching to the simulation environment. With the simulation environment, you can go into what's called the Simplify Design Study. So if I go into Simplify, it opens up this separate workspace. In this workspace, you can create multiple simulation models that do not affect the original design. So at any point, if I make a change to this simulation model and I, I need to go back and see what the original model looked like, I can leave the Simplify environment, go back to the design workspace, and I have the full model in here. So what it does is it creates a duplicate that I can use to create a CFD version of the model that is ready for simulation. And I can still go back and take measurements from the original and determine what I've taken out and what I haven't. So I really like to use the simplify environment. Uh, I already removed a couple things out. So if I go back to the beginning, you'll see all I did was I removed the motor and I removed the outer frame from the system. I also added in this, uh, this mesh up here. This is going to represent just something like a filter. Uh, you might have a filter in your system. Maybe I have a baffle. So maybe there's a baffle um, near the outlet of my machine. Either way, it's more than likely that you'll have some type of fluid uh, flow resistor like this. So a, a mesh screen to catch contaminants or particles. You might have a baffle. Those are examples of things you might need to model in CFD. So I included this so that you can see the process that I typically use um, for evaluating that type of flow resistance. So this is kind of our starting point. We have our fan. We've got a hole where the motor was. We've got this outer plate right here. These are things that I'm going to remove before I bring this into CFD. So my simulation model here, all I can do is I can just expand this and say, well, I don't need this outer plate. Um, that's not going to be needed. I'm going to basically just create a hole that represents my inlet just to simplify it even further. Um, so what I can do is take this plate and I'm just gonna right click and remove. I'm going to take this inlet. I'm going to remove that as well. I don't need that level of detail in this case. Um, and then uh, let's say I've got all these mounting holes here. I definitely don't need that detail. Fusion 360 has a great tool called Remove Features. I can select this face and I can say I would like to remove uh, holes. So I'll check the box for holes. And if I zoom in, you can see it located all of those holes. The reason it didn't choose the large hole in the center is because I have this feature size slider that I can use. So if I slide this up, it might pick up that hole. If I slide it down, it'll only pick up these smaller holes around the edge. So I'll go ahead and click delete. It just removes those features. And then I can come in here and say, well, I'm gonna size this down to the inlet size. I'm gonna make this inlet right here a little smaller. Let's make this a little bit smaller, something like that. And let me just check the actual size here. I wanted it close to about 16 inches. Was that 18? So I'll go ahead and modify that and bring it in one more inch. So now I have a inlet right here representing the inlet from that um, uh, suction side. I'm gonna have a diameter about 16 inches. That's gonna be close enough for the simulation. So what I've done, I've just removed that inlet plate and simplify that geometry a little bit. These are things that can be done really quickly with Fusion. Um, same goes for this other side. I don't need this, uh, this inlet right here. I probably don't need um, that level of detail. So I'm gonna just go ahead and do a remove face and select the hole in the sheet metal 
and click delete. Cut that out. And then the last thing I need to do is I need to simplify the resistance that I have from the screen as well as the, the fan here. So uh, Fusion 360 has a tool called Replace with Primitives. So I'll click on that. I'm going to click my fan. I'm going to replace this with a cylinder uh, about the Z axis. And I'll just make the overall radius um, 15 inches to match the diameter of 30 there. And it just sizes it to match the overall width. I might bring it in a little bit. So I'm simplifying the fan into just a cylinder. I'm going to be using what's called a um, a centrifugal pump uh, as my material in Autodesk CFD, which I'll show you when we get to that stage. So I need to simplify it into a simple cylinder. That's the only thing that that material will support. So I'll just go ahead and click OK. Remove that detail. And then when you're doing a cylinder uh, as a pump in Autodesk CFD, you need a separate surface for your inlet. The nodes of the inlet cannot touch the nodes of the outlet. So my outlet will be the radial surface of the cylinder. My inlet will be the axial surface. Currently, they share an edge. Because they share an edge, Autodesk CFD will not allow me to do that. So what I need to do is create a split that represents the size of my inlet. So the size of the inlet, I think, was like 16 inches, something like that. So I'll click Finish, and I'll go ahead and do a split. I'm going to split this face with this tool. So now I have one single body, but I split that face, which means my inlet can be this surface. My outlet can be the radial surface, and they don't touch. So they don't share a node, which means Autodesk CFD will permit me to use that as a pump material. So we'll go ahead and just leave that. That's going to be my fan. And then I can do the same thing with this resistance. Autodesk CFD has a material I can use called resistance where I can specify what's called a free area ratio. So instead of it just being a perfectly um, open channel, I can say that the um, flow is restricted by a specified percentage. So if my air free area ratio is 50%, that means that 50% of the volume is free for air to flow through, the other 50% is closed. So what you can do is you can calculate that by just taking the ratio of the free area and dividing by the overall area, and that will give you your free area ratio. So this specific design with these holes in it, the free area ratio was um, something like 0.4. So about 40% of the uh, space is free for air to flow through. So what I can do is do a replace with primitives. This is going to be a just a simple box. That's all that CFD needs for that resistance material. It's a quarter of an inch thick. So I'll click OK. And now I've got my resistance material in there ready to go. And now I can create my air volume. So the last thing I need to do is fill all of the space that's remaining with an air volume so that when I bring it into Autodesk CFD, it knows what is air, what material is my fan, and what material is my resistance. So I'll go ahead and bring all my bodies back in. I've got all those in there. My, my fan is in there, my resistance. And to create a fluid volume, you can do it in Autodesk CFD or you can do it ahead of time. I typically do it ahead of time because it's pretty simple. I'm going to patch the inlet with a surface. I'm going to patch the outlet with a surface. And then what I can do is have Fusion 360 automatically calculate that fluid volume. So I patch those two surfaces, which means this is a fully enclosed volume. So I can go ahead and go to create a fluid volume with Fusion 360. This will be an internal fluid volume. I'll highlight it, click OK, and I'm done. So now I can go ahead and I can remove those surface bodies because I don't need them anymore. And the resulting fluid volume, you'll notice right here, it filled everything except for the fan. Um, and the resistance. And then on the top side, it created a separate fluid volume here, which is the air that uh, the space after my baffle screen that I have right there. So I've got my fluid volumes created. Um, at this stage, 
um, I could then remove my sheet metal. So I can actually completely remove all of my sheet metal. So it's just the fluid volume and the fan. So I have several volumes in here. And then what I typically do to improve the convergence result at the inlet and the outlet is extend it a little ways. It helps to um, create a better profile for taking sample points and you'll have a uh, result that's generated a little bit quicker as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pull this outlet face out a little bit. Just pull it like eight inches. And I'll pull the outlet out the same like eight inches. That will allow me to get a better sampling of data at the outlet because it's not escaping um, as easily out the sides. So you're going to get some some data that's easier to to work with in out of the CFD if you extend the inlet and the outlet, and it'll converge quicker, especially if you have um, thermal analysis that you're doing as well. So this all looks pretty good at this point. I can just take this and I can export it out to Autodesk CFD. So let me show you the other model in here the other one that i created should look basically the same so i can just go ahead and take this one out and export it or so that's going to export as a step file the other option is you'll notice in fusion 360 if you go to tools if you have cfd installed on your computer you'll be able to just go to cfd 2021 and click simulate in cfd and it automatically takes this geometry and it opens up cfd and i don't have to actually go through any export process so I'm going to call this uh, blower demo. Um, I have to choose a path. Let me just save it to a, uh, a new folder in here. Call my blower webcast. So I'm going to create a new folder for this, and I'll go ahead and click one. Which you'll notice in here, there's also the option to update an existing design study. You would use the update tool if you already exported this once and you made a change. You can update your design study without having to start over. So all it will do is it'll update the model that was already in CFD with what your current one is, and then you can continue working from there. In this case, I'm starting fresh. So I'll just click launch. And what it'll do is it'll just open up this model directly in CFD, and I can start to apply all of my conditions. So I'm using CFD 2021. This uh, integration is also available if you have an older version. So if you have CFD 2019, you can do the same thing. When you open up CFD, it'll look something like this. So let's make sure everything got brought in. It should have a couple volumes. I've got my air volumes. So I'll hide that. Let me go to volume here. And I'll hide my other air volume. So I have a resistance and a fan. And that's it. So a total of four volumes. So first thing I'm going to do is apply some material. So I'll just say that these two volumes here are going to be air. So this will be a fluid. This will be air. So I'll click apply. I'll hide those. Um, this material is going to be resistance. So I'll click that volume. And I'll go to my materials, resistance, and click edit. So I have a couple materials in here. Um, if I was defining a new one, um, what I would do is just apply this as a free area ratio. So with a resistance material, what it does is allow you allows you to specify the flow rate through, as well as normal direction 1K and 2K. That would be, if your flow is going in the Z direction, the normal direction would be the X and the Y direction. So it's uh, in the normal perpendiculars. My fluid flow through here, 0.57. So if I was doing this for my baffle I just designed, it was a 0.4, so I just need to update this to 0.4. Click apply, click save. So this is my mesh material with a fluid flow rate of 0.4 as the free area ratio. Um, it says my normal direction for my flow is gonna be the X direction. That's correct in this case. The flow goes through this in the X direction. So make sure that's correct. And then Y and Z are my normal directions. And fluid cannot escape out the side. So that's why my flow was zero for those two directions. But my Free area ratio is 0.4 in the X direction. So that's all set, I'll click apply. And the last thing I need to do is define what this is gonna be. So I'm gonna click on the volume. This is going to be um, a material. It's going to be a centrifugal pump, which just means air comes in axially and out radially. 
And so I have a material in here called blower that I already created. So I'll show you what this is. All it is is my flow rate here. So I'm saying that this fan circulates there at 500 cubic feet per minute. So 500 CFM. I'm saying that it rotates at about 2000 RPM. These values you can typically get from your supplier for that fan. So you'll probably have that data already. So just put those values in. Click OK. And then you need to define the surfaces for the inlet and the outlet, and that's it. So my axis of rotation right now, it's saying global X. That's not correct. It rotates about Z. So I'll click Z. And it rotates in the negative Z direction. So I'll click plus minus here to invert it. So it's rotating in the negative Z. My inlet surface, I'll go ahead and click this, and my surface will be this face here. My outlet surface, I'm going to go ahead and select surface, and I'll select this one right here. Click apply, and I'm done. So the air will come in this surface, it will exit out this surface, and it's rotating in the negative Z direction, so about the Z axis, negative. That's just about it. I mean, from there, all you need to do now you have your materials that define your boundary condition. So my boundary condition, in this case, the only thing driving the flow is going to be that fan. So my inlet right here, I'll apply a pressure of zero. This means that it's free. And my outlet here, I'll also apply a pressure of zero. So the system's free for air to come in and out, the inlet and the outlet. The fan is what's going to drive the flow. And the resistance will create a pressure drop. So from there, uh, you'll just need to mesh it. When you go to mesh something like this, um, the auto size tool up here will give you a pretty good starting point. What I recommend doing though, for instance, this um, resistance here, you typically want to have two elements through the thickness. So if I were to go and look at this mesh, if I right click on it and do preview, I have like one element through the thickness right now. If you want to improve your results on your pressure drop, what you'll want to do is edit that mesh and just slide your density down until you have two elements through the thickness. So it look, should look something like that. Let me zoom in there. Basically, you'll want to have like this. We have two elements through the thickness. That will give you better results for the pressure drop across that, that uh, fan um, baffle or the mesh screen that you have in there. Just make sure your mesh is small enough there and then you're pretty much ready to solve. So after it solves, this is kind of what you'll get. Um, the output bar, I ran 200 iterations. It shows you the convergence. So it shows me that these values converged um, or were very close to it. I might run a few more iterations to improve that VY velocity, but each of these values is tracked over time. So with each iteration, it tells me how close I am to a converged result. So I'm getting pretty close. You'll see how they start kind of changing rapidly. Once all of these lines are parallel, that means you have a converged result. So this is pretty accurate. I could probably do a little bit better, but after 200 iterations, I'm in a pretty good spot. So looking at the results, I first like to look at planes. So this plane right here is a planar result showing my pressure. I'll go ahead and put the units in inches of water. So what you can see really quickly is where you have some low pressure on the edges of the fan. I have these vectors turned on showing the flow direction. So you can see the flow direction. You can see the flows coming in and then exiting out the outlet here, as I would expect. This is showing pressure. So I can see there's some pressure building in the corner right here on each side. Um, and there's a significant pressure drop across that, uh, that bath. I want to sample what that pressure drop is. I can click on X, Y plot, and I can actually plot points. So let's say I want to look at the pressure from here with three points and then three points on the other side. So I'm tracking my pressure along that line. I'll click plot. And right away, you can see that pressure drop as raw data. So I can see across that screen, on the first side, pressure is pretty high. I'll switch the units of the silt line up. And then as soon as you hit that screen, there's a pressure drop. And on the other side of the screen, it's uh, a negative value, which is what I would expect here. So it, you know, using the, the contour here shows me in you know, yellow and green 
But yellow and green usually isn't good enough for your engineering data. You actually need the values. So that XY plot allows me to take that contour and create this nice XY plot showing the data. I can then click Save Data, and I can save this out as a Excel CSV file, and I can work with the data in Excel um, and maybe use it for a presentation or documentation. So keep in mind those XY plots can pull data out really quickly. Another thing I might look at is my velocity. So let's say I switch this plot to velocity. This shows my velocity. Let me update this a little bit here. So it should look something like that. You can see I've got a lot of velocity, um, almost 14,000 feet per minute at the edge of the fan, and then it exits out close to 1,000, maybe 1,500 feet per minute um, at the outlet. If I want to get exact values, again, what I can do is I can go ahead and take some sample points. What I'm going to do is actually switch to a different orientation. So I created this plane that's the exit or the outlet of my system. What I can do is I can click on bulk result, and I'm going to calculate the average velocity in feet per minute at the exit. So I'll click calculate. I'm also going to calculate the volume flow rate at the exit in cubic feet per minute. And I'll click calculate. It gives me our results right here. So my average volume flow rate is about 3,400 CFM. My average velocity in the X direction, which is the direction of exit, is about 921 feet per minute. So that's my average. So I now know what in general to expect for my average at the exit. And then I can take this and do a sample. So I'm going to do an XY plot and I'm going to add points from this side all the way to the other side. Quick plot. And this shows a little bit of a different story. So I saw that my average volume flow rate and velocity were, you know, uh, 3,400 and, you know, about 900. But if you look at the velocity using data points across the outlet, I can see that near the corner of my exit, I have close to 800 or 900. Um, let me change the units here to feet per minute. I have close to 2,000 feet per minute over there, but then at the other side, I'm closer to 800 or 900. So my average comes kind of right in the middle, around 1,000. But I can see I have a lot more velocity at the corner of my outlet than I do at the other side. So this is something that you might use to evaluate your design and determine how can you get a more consistent velocity profile. Um, those XY plots go a long ways in identifying that. Now, the last thing I wanted to show here was how you can compare two designs side by side. So I've got these, um, these plots for this design. What I did was I created a second study. In my second studies, looking at baffle number two, I changed the free area ratio from 0.4 to 0.8. So what that means is I've created more holes in my baffle or more holes in my screen, allowing for more air to get through. So if more air can get through, I should see a different result for my pressure. So you can see that my static pressure is not building quite as much in the corner because there's not as much resistance to the flow. I'm getting a more consistent um, pressure on each side of that screen, which is what I would expect because there's less resistance. For velocity, if I go to this plane, I can see generally, if I update this a little bit, I can see generally I'm getting a pretty similar velocity profile. Um, if I were to look at the results at the outlet, it's probably going to be a little bit higher. But rather than doing that with planes, what I can do is go to this decision center. In the decision center, what I've done is I've taken those planes. So the plane um, for the outlet and the plane for the overall system, and I've used those as summary planes. What this allows me to do is actually compare raw data. So design one on the left here is my baffle one, design two here, baffle number two. And I can look and see kind of what some of the different values are. So number one, pressure. I can see in the first design, my max pressure is negative two with a more free baffle. So baffle number two, my max pressure is only negative one. Mass flow rate is almost double. 
for design number two, I can see my mass flow rate increase significantly. Volume flow rate almost doubled as well. So I'm getting more volume flow. I'm getting less pressure. And if I look at the overall volume flow rate summary on this second plane here, I can see that at the outlet, so plane number two is at the outlet, I can see that my um, volume flow rate uh, was 3,400 for my first design. The average volume flow rate for design number two is 4,600. So just by making a slight change to the design of that baffle, I can really quickly observe the uh, results using flow rate, velocity, pressure, um, and those can be done in 3D using those visualization tools that I showed, but it can also be done um, just using raw data points and creating these summary planes. You can also create summary images. So if I wanted to look at these side by side, I can compare design number one and design number two side by side. So this right here is baffle one. This is baffle two. So if I flip back and forth between the images, it's really obvious how that pressure changes. So in the second one, there's less of a pressure drop. In the first one, you can really start to see that pressure drop build at the corners. So the images can be compared side by side. The data can be compared side by side. And that's what that decision center is really for. It allows you to summarize your info. Instead of having to go dig through all these screens over and over again, you can put it in one concise location. Um, and you can compare as many designs as you want to at the same time. So hopefully that was helpful. Again, this is just an example of uh, you know using CFD for fluid flow, um, using a couple of materials and resistances to generate um, your fan and your resistance material. So I'll open up for questions now. We've got some time here remaining. Um, and uh, so hopefully you guys have some good questions we can cover before we wrap things up.